David St. Jacques is an astronaut with the Canadian Space Agency. He was raised right near here in St. Lambert. Now, David has always been passionate about travel, and in 2008, when he heard the Canadian Space Agency was recruiting astronauts, he decided to take that passion beyond our planet and was recruited a year later. After years of work and training, he was assigned his first space mission in 2016, and on December 3rd of last year, he launched to the International Space Station. While he's up there, he'll be conducting scientific experiments, robotic tasks, and testing new technologies. But today, he's taking a quick break from his space life to talk to us. Montreal, this is a wee day first. Get excited! Now, connecting with the International Space Station can be tricky. So while we wait, we're going to share some fun facts. I don't know, Tyrone. I think our connection oh, is we really did it. great. I we think we've got him right here. David, can you hear us? Okay, I think he's got us. <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. Can you hear wow, me? Wow, Montreal, can you believe this? David, so we want to thank you so much can you for hear being me? with us here today. And we have got some amazing students. <laughs> We're talking to space. There might be some delays, everybody. We're going to get there. So we have got some questions from students. And first up, we've got Rihanna from John F. Kennedy Elementary. Where are you? There she is. Rihanna, stand up, wave. She wants to know, what experiments are you currently doing on the ISS? Currently on board the ISS, there's hundreds of experiments uh, that we do. Uh, mostly to help us understand how to better live in space and how to better live in the environment of space so that one day we can go even further, go back to the moon and one day to Mars. But it's not just for that. All the experiments we do here in space, they can help us back on Earth as well because everything that happens to astronauts in orbit resembles a real disease on Earth. For example, our bones get weaker, our muscles get weaker, our immune system gets weaker, even our cardiovascular system gets affected. And everything that we affects astronauts happens very quickly on young and healthy individuals. So it's perfect place for medical research. So every time scientists find a way to help us stay healthy, at the same time they find a way to help people on the ground stay healthy. This is We Day Montreal. How do you hear me? <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. This is pretty cool. Okay. All right. Uh, you're, you're... Uh, okay. All right. Next up, next up, we have Angel from John Caldwell School. Angel, are you here? Stand up, wave, let us see you. Angel, there I you see go. You. Now, David, she wants to know what were you most amazed by? Ah, uh, you know, what was most amazing when I flew on the Soyuz rocket is the first time that I look out the window and I saw the thin blue line of the atmosphere of our planet protecting us from the deadly vacuum of space. It was just an amazing sight. And you know, as all astronauts, I spend a lot of energy and a lot of time training to go to space. But the first thing I want to do when I come here is look back and look at our beautiful planet because it is amazingly gracious. And it brings home very clearly the fact that when you see our beautiful planet floating in the black of space, there's no tube with no new air. There's no tube with new water. All we have is there on Earth, and it's an amazing recycling loop. Mother Earth is an incredible recycling machine, and we have to take good care of Mother Earth. Emily from St. John, John Fisher Sr. asks, if you could describe space in one word, what would it be? It would be the new perspective that it gave me. When you see the world from up here, 
You don't see borders. You see one beautiful planet with one humanity living on it. And of course, it's important what country you're from, your culture. It's very important. It defines the way we live. But it's not as important as the fact that we're all human beings together. And for us astronauts in space, it's a very big source of pride that we can demonstrate every day that it doesn't matter which country you're coming from, we can work together. You know, the station was built by nations from around the world. Nations like the United States, Canada, Russia, Germany, Japan, France, and a bunch more. Nations, some of whom, not so long ago, if you ask for your grandparents, maybe they'll remember, some of these countries used to be at war with each other. Now we work together towards an incredible goal. To me, that's a great source of hope for children and for the next generations. It's a proof that when we decide to work together, we can achieve incredible things, and that is the way forward for humanity. One love. All right, our next question is from Carolina from Rosemount High. Where are you, Carolina? Wave. Hello. She wants to know, what advice could you provide young Canadians in their pursuit of their dreams? <laughs> nice. Very important question. So dreams are your most important treasure. And your dream lives in your head, and sometimes dreams have a very, very small voice, but you've got to listen to your dream. I would say, don't be afraid of your dream, even if it's big and crazy. If it's big and crazy, it means it's a good dream. Because what's important is not to reach your dream. What's important is that your dream gives you a direction in which to go every day. And then maybe you can change. Things happen, you make decisions are different, you change direction. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what matters is that every decision was a decision that made you happy. And it was the good decision at that point. And if every decision is good, then the end result is good. So your dream is not a destination. Your dream is a direction, like a star that guides you. That's a very wise advice that was given to me when I was a kid by an astronaut, by Dr. Steve McLean. He told me, just make sure every time you make a decision, it's a decision that increases your happiness. And that way, you cannot go wrong. You can always be happy at the end. Some very good life advice here. Thank you so much. I think we've got some time left for questions from students here today. We've got a couple from Madison from St. Luke's Extreme Group. Madison, where are you? There she is. First question is, what's something you wish someone would have told you before you went to the International Space Station? You know, wow. So, I mean, there's so many things that you cannot prepare for coming here, you know. Uh, I knew it would be fun to fly, but I, I had no idea it would be this fun, that you could just turn around like this and fly. And actually, what I'm surprised is that now I find it normal. Isn't that amazing how incredibly adaptive we are? Even flying like this for me now is normal after two months. My body has adapted. So that's an incredible thing, how much we can adapt. So even if you're afraid of something, doesn't matter. You can adapt to any situation. Wow. <laughs> I want to do that one day. I want to fly. <laughs> also from Madison, do you think kids will ever be able to go to space, David? Well, you know, imagine this situation. Imagine 100 years ago when only very rich uh, adults could take the plane and there was no children taking the plane. If you ask, would children one day be able to take the plane? Maybe it looked very difficult to believe. I think it's the same with new technology, with the advancement of society. I think one day we will fly everybody to space. I hope. That's my hope. But uh, anyway, children grow, grow up and they become adults. And then as an adult, for sure you can go. <laughs> we will all grow up. He's definitely correct. All right, next up, Carolina from Rosemount High School. She asks, what are you most excited about during your voyage? What I'm most excited about, uh, there's a couple of things. Of course, all the great research we do here, it's very exciting. Me, I'm, I was a doctor before being an astronaut, so I'm very excited about all that medical research that we do here, the ways we can help people on Earth who are sick. 
but also I love to travel and I love to meet people from different cultures. And it's amazing for me to be working in an international collaboration like this. You see all those flags behind me, all these countries that are working together. I find this really, really, really amazing, the demonstration that we can work together. It's not just a theory, it's reality. Humans work together on a great, amazing project here in space. Okay, David, we have two questions from Vaughn from St. John Fisher Sr. First, he asks, what was the most important thing you've learned in becoming an astronaut? That's a very important question. Well, one thing I learned is about fear. I learned that it's okay to have fear. To be brave, as said Nelson Mandela, is not to have no fear, to be brave is to be afraid, but to go anyway. And your fear is like an alarm system that tells you, oh, this is something dangerous, this is something tricky, you gotta pay attention. Fear just means you gotta pay attention and be careful. It doesn't mean you shouldn't go. So that's something I learned, to use the fear as a, as a trigger for extra awareness, not as a sign to say no, no. His next question is, who or what experiences convinced you or inspired you to become an astronaut and go off into space? I remember when I was a young, young child, maybe five or six or seven, I don't know, seeing these images of the Earth seen from space. And I thought it was incredible because I could recognize this was the Earth, but obviously the person who took the photo was not on Earth. How could that be? And my dad explained to me that the photographer was on the moon. And to me, that was incredible. It was like a revelation. It meant that through studying and working hard and training, we can accomplish amazing things. And that the most fun thing to do in life is to explore and to understand more and more about the world around you. Okay, David, next up is a bit of a hard-hitting question from Cassie from John Caldwell School. She asks, can you take me to the moon, David? <laughs> Fly me to the moon. I wish I could take everybody up with me here and then beyond to the moon and then to Mars. I think it would be amazing if everybody could have this experience. So I can't, so I'm trying to share as much of the emotion with you. So Certainly is. Okay, we've got another question from St. John Fisher Sr. This one's from Emily. She wants to know, how do you feel emotionally and physically while in space? So it takes uh, some adaptation. Some people adapt uh, more quickly than others. For me, it took me a couple of weeks before physically I felt okay. Initially, I was always a little bit nauseous, a bit like being, you know, airsick. Uh, I was uh, very disoriented. I felt very congested because all the blood was rushing to my head without gravity to pull it down towards my feet. And I was often lost, I find. Like if I would, here I know where I am, and if I would go sideways like this, I'd be disoriented and not know which way is up or down. And like this was even worse. But uh, now, my body is very well adapted. I feel as if I was born here almost. And mentally, well, same thing, disorientation. Sometimes I miss the people I love on Earth, uh, but thankfully we have ways to talk to each other or even do some video conferencing. So uh, psychologically, this is actually a nice, a nice experience because we're a very small group of people living here and very close-knit. We're like brothers and sisters on an adventure. All right, Katie from John Caldwell School asks, what is the best thing about being an astronaut? The best thing about being an astronaut, I think is how varied the job is. One day you're flying a rocket, that's amazing. One day you're looking at the planet from space, that's also amazing. But one day you have to repair the toilet. Another day you have to repair a computer. Another day you make an experiment, maybe you'll make a discovery. 
another day you're just moving things around uh, you're, or you're cleaning or you have to do everything up here. You really become a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a, a jack of all trades, as we say. You even have to do some communications like I do now and teach to people the beauty of my experience. So I really like the variety of the experience. All right, next we've got Violet from Pleasant Corners Public School. She wants to know, what does the launch feel like? And what about no gravity? So the launch is an amazing ride. So imagine you are in your rocket. Rocket, this is what your seat looks like. You're like on your back in a little ball like this. And then the rocket ignites and it's as if two giant hands were pushing you up in the air and pushing you, and you're like squished on your seat by the acceleration and the vibration. And then after about only 10 minutes, the rocket stops and you're in orbit. You're not on Earth anymore. You're above the atmosphere in the black darkness of the vacuum of space. And it's as if suddenly you start floating and you're like in another world. You just entered another world. And zero gravity, well, how to describe it? Maybe if you've ever jumped off the highest diving board of the swimming pool, during those one or two seconds when you're falling, that's what you feel like when you're in zero G. You feel everything inside you kind of going up. Initially, it's a bit strange, but after a while, of course, you get used to it. All right, I think we have time for one more question. We've got another one from Pleasant Corners Public School. This one's from Emma. She asks, how do you communicate with Earth from space? So right now, we're, I'm talking to you via some satellites. I'm talking through your phone, and it, my microphone is going through some satellites. Satellites going through a relay station in the United States, and then from there, via the normal telephone network, up to you. But I can also, we can also make video phone calls like we're doing now. Uh, so it's all going through satellites, just like when you call anybody else on the Earth with a cell phone. In a way, it's easier from space station because it goes one way, from space to Earth and Earth to space. It doesn't have to bounce back to space. Well, I wish we had more time, but that's all the questions we have today. David, thank you so much for joining us all the way from space. We day, we day. Can we make some noise for astronaut David St. Jacques? Thanks again, David. Safe travel.